Ford is shutting down all production and leaving the U.S. to find better conditions in Mexico with all the current strikes and UAW complaints they're getting. They want to make a run for it and start production down south. But Ford is not alone, and this shift will cost people a lot, especially their employees. But it will also affect the country's economy, and there is more to it than just strikes and unions. Let me explain, Jim. Farley mentioned that the strike altered Ford's bond with the UAW. They need to consider their future vehicle production locations. They're prioritizing making vehicles in Mexico over the U.S. That is becoming a reality. Although the UAW strikes are over, their effects will linger for years. Ford CEO Jim Farley has delivered a blunt message to the unions, especially the UAW. Essentially, it feels like he's saying that the UAW have messed up and so of the people that they represent, American workers are in trouble. Ford has already let go over 15,000 employees in the last six months. While not all of these layoffs have been in the United States, a majority of them have. They recently shut down a factory in Germany resulting in 4,500 job losses and have also closed facilities in Spain too. In the U.S. alone, thousands of staff have been let go. Ford's stance is clear. It can't sustain its current workforce as soon as viable robot replacements like Tesla bots or others become available. Ford will eagerly adopt them, seeing human labor as too costly. So Farley, the big man at Ford, is thinking about shipping some products down to Mexico. Why? Well, most of it boils down to one thing, money. Farley reckons they can't keep churning out cars in the U.S. with the current situation and still make massive profits like they used to. And hey, Mexico seems like a pretty sweet deal. Cheaper labor, no unions breathing down their necks. It sounds like heaven to big corporations. But hold up before they pack their bags. Ford needs to be crunching the numbers. Now they're trying to keep things behind closed doors till they make a full official announcement. The way in, the pros and cons, it's all about finding that sweet spot between saving cash and keeping quality top-notch. Plus, they're not just winging it. They're getting input from everyone, work customers, dealers, suppliers, you name it. Or at least that is what we're meant to believe. The craziest thing is they don't want to be left behind. They're eyeing up the competition, checking out what the likes of BYD and Tesla are up to in the EV game. So, if they do that, it's only a matter of time until everyone does it. It'll start a domino effect, and some are even saying that they might team up with Toyota on this one, which seems highly unlikely given their rival history. The implications are massive. Moving to Mexico could be a game-changer for Ford. What it means is lower costs, fatter profits, and a smoother operation overall. And Mexico is not just a pit stop, it's a gateway to a massive market, especially for electric rides. With some smart partnerships down there, Ford could be tapping into new and growing markets. So, what's the bottom line? Ford's got some big decisions to make. It's a tough spot to be in, but that's business. They just need a way to adapt to all of this and come up with a way. And that is exactly why this plan is being made. But all of that comes with a lot of cost and it seems like revenge to many who support the UAW strikes. So, whatever Ford wants to do, they have to consider what the people want. But are they doing that? You be the judge. We just provide you with the facts. So, watch carefully. Things took a wild turn starting September 15th when the contract renewal deadline came and went, leaving 12,700 workers from these companies hitting the brakes on work. That was a massive number. It's like the UAW decided to throw down the gauntlet all at once. But wait, it gets even more intense. Fast forward to September 22nd, and parts distribution workers from 38 GM and Stantis sites spread across 20 states decided to join the strike. And they weren't just sitting around, they went for hard strikes, mixing work with protest. UAW President Shafane dropped a mysterious hint, saying all options remain on the table. They had their eyes set on key plants like GM slicing Delta and Ford Chicago facilities. And guess what? The numbers didn't lie. Around the fourth week of the UAW strike, a whopping 25,000 UAW members joined the strike. That's around 12% of the entire union workforce across the big three automakers. Their mission was to scrap the two-tier wage system and score a hefty pay rise. To be honest, it is a bold move, but for many people, it was their livelihood and the companies were getting most of the profits. The UAW wants higher wages, better benefits, more job security, and a larger profit share, while Ford wants to lower its labor costs, which are the highest in the industry. The Center for Automotive Research reports that Ford pays $61 per on wages and benefits to U.S. workers, while GM pays $53, Toyota $50, and Honda $44. The UAW refuses to compromise and threatens to strike if Ford does not agree. 
Strikes at several Ford plants have already affected the production of profitable models like the Explorer, Expedition, and F-Series Super Duty, costing Ford millions in revenues and harming its reputation. But wait, there's more to the story than just wage gaps. The UAW has thrown in a plot twist by pushing for a whopping 40% salary hike. Over four years. Meanwhile, the big players in the automotive world, GM and Ford, are feeling the heat from the strike. They're now in a frenzy contemplating job cuts, and they have done so in massive amounts. And the only plan for Ford now is to leave the country and start production in Mexico. But this thing will backfire on them for more reasons than one. Let me explain. What Ford and other companies like them seem to not understand is that these things are inevitable if you don't. Pay your workers as they deserve, then they will have to strike. I mean, is it even a question? We've seen it countless times, and wherever you go, you'll see this happening in Mexico, too. It's only a matter of time. They need to find a constant and permanent solution. The only way that they can get cheap labor for a lot of years is if they get a deal with the government to put in place some sort of policy regulation that benefits all parties involved. Or the other way to get. It is to have unskilled workers that don't ask a lot of pay because they don't have a lot of experience. But that is not what Ford needs now. I mean, for three years running, they've been leading the pack in recalls across the states. Engines blowing up, valves doing the limbo, electronics throwing tantrums, you name it. So before they start pointing fingers and complaining, they should fix their own mess first. What will be the point if they start making cars outside? Of the market to increase their profit margins but make worse cars that are unreliable and just bad overall? Will they even be able to compete in the market? I mean, look at their rivals. Look at Toyota. They've always made reliable and strong cars and they keep making them. The real solution is simple. Very simple. Remember that bill everyone was talking about in Washington, the one promising to boost jobs for good old American folks and keep the manufacturing game strong right here in the U.S. All the intentions behind that made sense and it was successful in making a good deal for all parties involved. What that would have done was make Ford and all the UAW workers work even more efficiently and reliably. It doesn't take a genius to realize that when companies respect their employees, production becomes more reliable and workers get motivated to work even more. And let me tell you, people would be lining up to buy American-made trucks if they were built right and priced right. Who wouldn't want to? There is a reason that Japanese car manufacturers are dominating the industry. Toyota, Honda, and Subaru make cars that are just masterpieces. They never break and their engineering is top-notch. It's almost always guaranteed. And this friction between companies and the public will only ever increase the chance for outside manufacturers to break into the market. I mean, Ford revived a whole new segment just three years ago, and now because of the same reliability issues, people are waiting for the new compact truck from these Japanese manufacturers. And beyond being reliable, their cars are unique for the most part. Look at Subaru. They're already making. Ford's departure from the U.S. to seek greener pastures in Mexico is causing a seismic shift in the automotive industry. The decision comes amidst a tumultuous period marked by strikes and discontent within the United Auto Workers UAW Union. Farley's stern message to the unions underscores the gravity of the situation, hinting at deeper rifts and frustrations within the labor-management relationship. The layoffs of over 15,000 employees coupled with factory closures across Europe and the United States paint a grim picture of Ford's financial woes. The looming specter of automation further exacerbates concerns for American workers as the company eyes cheaper labor and favorable conditions in Mexico. Yet, Ford's pivot to Mexico is not without risks. The company must navigate a complex web of economic, political, and social factors while ensuring quality and market competitiveness. The potential alliance with Toyota, though improbable, underscores the urgency for Ford to explore innovative strategies in an evolving industry landscape. Meanwhile, the UAW strikes represent a pivotal moment in labor history, with workers demanding fair wages, job security, and a greater share of profits. Ford's reluctance to meet these demands not only intensifies labor tensions but also threatens its reputation and market standing. The broader implications of Ford's exodus reverberate across communities, economies, and global markets. The company's departure signifies a loss for American manufacturing and a win for overseas competitors. It underscores the urgent need for a paradigm shift in corporate practices, one that prioritizes worker rights, sustainability, and ethical business conduct. As Ford embarks on this transformative journey, it faces a crucial juncture. The decisions made in the coming months will shape not only the company's future, but also the trajectory of the automotive industry as a whole. In this volatile landscape, only time will reveal the true ramifications of Ford's bold move.